how bad is prednisone really? A study came out this week to show how much of a burden corticosteroid therapy is for people with one disease condition called IgA nephropathy. And they looked at thousands of patients over 64 different studies to see what truly was it like to be taking prednisone or another steroid versus getting the disease treated without that. Which side effects were worse for people on steroids versus those who are off? So let's dive into the research to find out what it's really like to take prednisone or another steroid for IgA nephropathy. And I think a lot of these results, most of them are about the same for other diseases too. So why would a doctor be prescribing prednisone anyway? Prednisone is mimicking mother nature's hormone cortisol as an anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressant, helping people with inflammatory conditions like nephropathy or glomerulonephritis is another type of way of describing this condition. It's inflammation of the kidneys or any other form of inflammation, whether it's in your eyes, your skin, your heart, or other places. It can be incredibly effective as an anti-inflammatory, but the burden of side effects can be dramatic. I've documented up to 150 side effects to prednisone, but there are more, and the research just isn't that great out there to show what they truly are, what the actual incidence is. And that's because prednisone's a super old drug, and the drug company never had to do the research. So that's why articles like this always catch my eye, and I'm interested to find out what they're actually seeing in studies. First thing they found is that the guidelines for this condition recommend using prednisone or other steroids for less than six months. And that's what they recommend, things like that for other conditions. Don't use prednisone very long for rheumatoid arthritis or polymyalgia rheumatica or asthma. That's what all the guidelines say. But it says the study found that 59% of patients were on prednisone for eight to 24 months. People get stuck on it. It works so well and other things may not work as well or whatever, and they're on it for a long time. So that means the side effects are coming and the longer you're on it, the worse the side effects are. So comparing prednisone use versus those who didn't use any form of steroid, the side effects were much more common and widespread. Here are some of the concerning side effects. First was metabolic side effects. Weight gain, diabetes, and increased cholesterol were quite common. In one study, three to 5% of patients developed diabetes after being on prednisone. Cushing syndrome is the fancy word to describe what prednisone does to make your face look round like a moon face, a big belly, muscle loss in your arms and legs, and other complications to make your face and your appearance just look different. Cushing's was much more common in patients on prednisone compared to those who were on placebo, which is no drug, or those who got pulse dose therapy. For example, those who get a really high dose of IV steroids in the hospital and then don't continue taking it. This makes sense because typically moon face takes a couple weeks to appear. And if you're only on steroids for a few days, then it makes sense that it wouldn't appear. Then there's edema or swelling. There are much higher rates in those using steroids versus those not. A finding that I found interesting is that they found increased risk for cataracts, like your eye, your lens of your eye, but not glaucoma. I've pretty much always heard of glaucoma and cataracts both being side effects of prednisone, but in this situation, there was no incidence of glaucoma. So that's really good news. It also kind of makes sense because glaucoma is more typically associated with the eye drop version of steroids compared to the pill version of steroids. And then there's bone and joint problems. So osteoporosis and fractures were more frequent in long-term users. One study showed that patients on prednisone were significantly more likely to have a fracture than those on alternative therapies. Next, prednisone is an immunosuppressant. It's suppressing your immune system. For me, that was why I took it, to make my autoimmune disease stop attacking me. But this can also increase your risk for infections like pneumonia, and in this situation, urinary tract infections. Even at lower doses, infection risks remained elevated compared to placebo. Then there's sleep and mental health related issues. 
Many patients experienced insomnia, anxiety, and mood swings, with more than 5% reporting sleep-related issues. So to summarize these side effects that they actually saw in these 64 studies compiled together, I'm gonna to read it straight from their article. There was a statistically significantly higher rates of dyslipidemia, that's high cholesterol, fracture, that's broken bones, and cataracts, that's when you have to get a lens replacement of your eye, in patients treated with corticosteroids for longer than six months relative to those not treated with corticosteroids. So those were the three most likely attributed to the treatment as opposed to potentially these other things are complications of the disease. What about serious adverse events? Hospitalizations for severe infections, severe metabolic issues like diabetes and fractures or broken bones. In one study, 16% of prednisone patients experienced severe adverse events compared to 2% with other supportive therapy for IgA nephropathy. So why does prednisone have so many risks? Well, like I mentioned, it's mimicking our body's naturally occurring hormone called cortisol, but cortisol normally is at about the equivalent of two and a half, maybe up to seven and a half milligrams of prednisone per day is what you'd normally make. But for conditions like IgA nephropathy, you might be taking 10, 20, or 100 milligrams in a day, which is a lot more than what your body makes. And so it's throwing off all of these hormone systems and signals in your body. It's affecting up to two thirds of genes, leading to these metabolic complications, weight gain, diabetes, sleep issues, mood issues, bone and joint issues, and on and on. It affects almost every organ system in your body. So what are some alternatives to prednisone for IgA nephropathy that they mention in this article? So first, targeted therapies. When you take a prednisone pill, it goes everywhere in your body. It doesn't just go to where you want it, which in this case is the kidneys. It's going everywhere, causing side effects across the entire body. So they've tried to attach things to the steroids to help them go to the site of action. So in this situation, a drug called budesonide, it's a targeted release corticosteroid, has been designed to reduce side effects by delivering the medication directly to the kidneys. It has shown promise of decreasing proteinuria, which is a way to measure how effective the medication is and for the disease with fewer systemic side effects. All of these ones I've just mentioned. There's new medications that completely avoid the corticosteroid complications altogether. These are called sparsentin and iptacopan, and they target specific pathways in IgA nephropathy, offering steroid-free treatment options. For some patients who don't have severe IgA nephropathy, supportive care with blood pressure medications like ACE inhibitors or ARBs can delay disease progression without the need for steroids. The study concluded that prednisone should be reserved for patients at the highest risk of progression to end-stage kidney disease and used for the shortest duration possible. I completely agree with that, that prednisone should only be used in the worst situations and you should always try to use some other treatment if possible. And if you have to use prednisone, use it at the lowest dose for the shortest duration of time. That is safe for your disease. Work closely with your doctor if you have questions about your treatment with prednisone or your treatment of IgA nephropathy. Ask for alternatives for your disease. See if there's any way to minimize your complications by getting on the lowest effective dose of this medication. Prednisone has saved countless lives. It saved mine. I'm so grateful that I'm alive today because of it. And I get that it causes so many side effects. And that's why I created the prednisone checklist. It includes the top side effects and what you can do to counteract them. Some of them are simple things that you don't know unless you see the list. So just click the link below to download the prednisone checklist now so that you know that you're doing everything within your power to minimize the side effects. That if you're like me and you have no other choice but to take prednisone, then you're doing everything you can to minimize the complications. Click the link below to download the prednisone checklist now. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.